figure out if I could have done that in the low octave before just going for it. It's too noty of a tune for me to just jump down there. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone. My name is Baron. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to Mando Lessons Live with a very, a very foggy version of whatever that tune is. Fisher's Hornpipe. Start things off including a, a failed attempt at playing it down an octave. <laughs> Hope you are all doing well. We got tons of folks in the chat already. Love to see it. We have Mando Pirate. We have Denise, Jim, Sheldon, Super Goat, Sean, Lewis, Ursanas, Alan, and Carol. Amazing. Thank you all for joining in. Hope you're all having a great Saturday. If you're new here and this is your first time, Introduce yourself in the chat. Love seeing new faces pop up. Love getting everybody chatting in the chat box. So I love it when I can't quite keep up. So uh, definitely keep busy over there. Make some new friends. Uh, how does it, as if, if you haven't been here before, <laughs> I'm a little spaced out today. <clears throat> if you haven't been here before, the way these work is it's an hour of Q&A. So I'll play some tunes. You can ask any question you have about mandolin or music or anything tangentially related and I'll do my best to answer some questions and keep you all entertained. Happy to take requests for tunes as long as they're not copyrighted and I can remember how they go. Which is usually like a 50-50 chance. I'll catch up with the chat here a little bit and then we'll jump right in. Jim's got a question. Having trouble keeping the neck still while I shift chords. Envy players whose left hand floats like a butterfly. That's a, that's a great question. So, yeah, I think <clears throat> it definitely takes some practice and some sort of conscious work on technique. And also, you know, just kind of the general basics of technique, of getting the instrument, you know, kind of locked down without locking your own technique down. You know, you don't want to tense up any muscles. But, you know, kind of going through everything I talk about in that beginner series... You know, even if you're not a beginner, I always recommend people check that out just for mostly kind of like how to hold the instrument because um, I've distilled 20 years of playing into what works best for me to sort of keep the instrument at the optimal place for playing. <clears throat> so we've got, you know, left arm down, bend at the elbow, kind of put the instrument in your left hand where it naturally where your left hand naturally falls rather than having the instrument there and grabbing the mandolin wherever the instrument is then you know your left shoulder is going to get pushed way back whereas if you bend at the elbow put the instrument in it also puts a little bit of an outward angle to the neck um, and it makes your shoulder and elbow much more relaxed same thing with the right arm um, kind of tip Oh, sorry, bend at the elbow, 90 degrees, everything else is nice and neutral. Flop over the instrument, and, you know, my arm usually falls right about where this armrest is. That can maybe be a little bit of help. You know, I don't think armrests are necessary by any means, 
but um, it gives it just sort of a different feeling of how your right arm attaches to the instrument. Um, and so that right there, you know, even without the, and having, <clears throat> excuse me, having a strap, got a little bit of a dry throat this morning. Um, even without having, or sorry, without having your left hand on the instrument, but having the strap and your right arm over the instrument, it's pretty solid right there. So I have to put minimal effort in to get the left hand moving. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go grab a glass of water here real quick. messy background of my studio this morning. Too many projects going on. <laughs> yeah, a lot of that technique is really going to help you keep the left hand kind of not holding the instrument up so it can focus more on floating around. And, you know, playing real slow, just going through your chord changes. <laughs> coming from technique and in terms of keeping the left hand uh, minimally holding the instrument so it can it can float a little bit more like a butterfly which I like that analogy using my uh, super goat says have trouble using my pinky any tips yeah I would say <clears throat> in general the pinky is everybody's weakest digit One great set of exercises is the FFCP, Four Finger Closed Position Scales, um, from jazzmando.com. It's just a lot of kind of scale exercises. your pinky to work and if you really you know go through them nice and slow it makes you use your pinky a lot once you get into those kind of closed position up the neck scales um, and then when you go back to you know occasionally using your pinky for a, like a tune like blackberry blossom then you've you know strengthened your pinky through those other exercises and it'll feel a lot less like a stretch and a lot less like your pinky is underperforming. Just gonna catch up with the chat here. <laughs> nice, glad you can make it to us. Nice. Whoa, one of Canada's big four internet providers had a total outage all day yesterday. Wow, bet that disrupted a lot of stuff. Hmm. Buck fever says what are some slow tunes you can play fully in tremolo <clears throat> i think in general a good place to look is waltzes and you can search through all the tunes on my website mandolessons.com by tune type so you can look up waltzes and learn some of those um maybe let's see what's a waltz and in general i find like tremolo all the time is going to be kind of intensive on your right hand it's gonna be a lot of work um, and maybe not the sound that I personally go for, but it's a great exercise to sort of, you know, practice your tremolos to just do it all the time. So, um...
So there's uh, Shebeg Shamor. Um, but yeah, I would say in general, waltzes. And just like any, any kind of slow tune you can find. Coleman's March. <laughs> slow song you might know just playing the melody definitely a great exercise for getting the tremolo into your playing awesome glad it's you got to join us carol for the first time all right jeb from australia good to have you here <laughs> yeah, I bet it's. What time is it in Australia? It's got to be. I can't even begin to guess, but I'm sure it's something crazy. I'm glad you could join us all the same. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, Jim is. Jim says I was afraid it would take practice. That's you know somehow. <clears throat> Somehow that's how it always pans out. Is you, you just gotta work on it. Cool. Super Goat says, "Could you play Coolies Reel?" Absolutely. I'm sure you're not the only one. Somehow the, the ten strings, sometimes I don't even notice it when watching other mandolin players. Like ten strings can kind of sneak by and nobody expects it. But yes, for anyone wondering, this is a ten string mandolin. It's actually more of a mandola. So it's it's C G D it's G D A E. Like a mandolin. But it's got a low C on it. Like a mandola. And it's actually mandola scale length. So it's just like a little bit bigger of an instrument in general. You know, compare it to that. So, can't really get them both in the shot, but yeah, it's just a little bit bigger. 16 inch scale length. So it's a bit more of a stretch, but I've been trying to get used to it here. <laughs> nice, yeah. Jeb, if, if they're doing karaoke at one in the morning, then you can definitely uh, play a little mandolin. Maybe you play mandolin for their karaoke. Steve 
Steve says, some months back you did one of the live episodes where you talked about ornamentation to the right hand. Right, oh, to the rights of man. Um, how would I search for that? Well, if you go to my website, mandolessons.com, and click on the little, I think it's green, button in the corner that says live Q&A. It'll pop up a window. Scroll down a little bit, and you can l get a link to the episode guide. It's a Google document that Denise keeps up to date. Um, and if you go in there, and maybe... You can like search the document for rights of man, um, see what pops up. You'll probably find it that way. And it, that it'll, it should have like a link right to it. Or you might have to search right hand ornamentation or, you know, do a little bit of searching around in there and see if you can come, come up with it. Or maybe somebody here just knows. <clears throat> Mantle Empire says, got a new mantle in, but it was set up incorrectly, lots of string buzz, the bridge is in the correct place. I have no luthier anywhere near me, and I cannot raise the bridge. Any thoughts? That is a good question. I would post, there's so many different variables, and I'm not an expert, but I would post pictures of it and kind of your description of what's going on on the Mandolin Cafe forum in like the builders and repair section. There's a lot of really smart repair people over there that could probably help you out and figure out what's going on but it's a little hard to do i i'm not i'm not an expert so i don't really know so without seeing it i wouldn't have any idea buck fever says you're going to celebrate re reaching 100,000 subscribers yeah definitely it's an i can't believe it's coming up i don't know when it'll happen um but uh <laughs> it'll be yeah, I'll do something fun. I don't know what it's going to be. Um, but I'm very excited. Thank you all for subscribing and allowing me to do what I do. M. Vanek, apologies if I'm not saying that correctly, says, looking forward to your class at O'Flaherty's. Awesome. Any preparation tips? Not really. No. I mean, like, get get some tunes under your fingers. I don't know, like, where you're at on the instrument, but, like, in general... Get some, I, I would say maybe the only preparation I would say is like play a bunch of Irish tunes. So I'll backtrack and say for anyone who's confused about what's going on here, uh, I'm teaching this October in Texas at the O'Flaherty's Irish Retreat. Uh, you can Google it and find it. I'll be teaching mandolin. Um, and M. Vanek is asking if there's anything to do to prepare. And I would say just play a bunch of Irish music. And come up with some questions, you know, like, by, that's what I tend to do whenever I'm in a situation where I'm the, the learner, is just kind of prepare by, by playing how I play and really kind of looking into my own playing and figuring out, like, okay, what is it that I feel I'm struggling on? What questions do I have so that you can kind of show up to class with, with some ideas? Because ultimately, I'm just there to to try to be as useful to everyone as possible and I feel like I'm happy to kind of talk about my general style and what works for me but when people come with specific questions that always is uh, the most helpful all right Ursinos is I've been seeing that in the discord that you're getting into the play along tracks love it yeah, it is. Playing with play along tracks is not easy. It's, you know, it's like playing with a metronome or like just the fact that like there's an external beat that you need to match up with and keep up with and sync up with is a huge part of kind of playing music in general. And it's, it definitely takes practice. Sheldon says, I was noticing last night that my E and A strings sounded twice as loud when amplified, but there was a noticeable improvement to when I used my when I used my fingernail instead. Is there a better way to improve it? I don't know that I quite understand the question, Sheldon. Are you amplifying like through an amp with like a, a magnetic pickup? Um, or is it like a piezo pickup, like either in the bridge or like a K and K that's either to the top or stuck under the inside of the instrument? Um, 
And it's a question of, like, your E and A strings are louder than your G and D strings. But I'm, I'm definitely curious, so fill us in and I'll, I'll try to help because I have some ideas, but I'm a little confused by the question. Nice. Buck Fever says, Oko Manual and Silent Night in Tremolo. Both great, great choices. It is 3 a.m. in Australia. Wow. <laughs> I haven't been up at 3 a.m. Actually, that's not true. I went to an old time camp out um, a couple, like, a couple weeks ago and stayed up all night multiple times. So, <laughs> but other than that, I have not been up until 3 a.m. for a long time. Do I, have I heard any of Norman Blake's songs, and how do I like him as an artist, if you have? I love Norman Blake. He is one of my favorites. Um, I was first introduced to Norman's music through the John Hartford album Aeroplane, where he's playing guitar and mandolin and doing some singing. Um, I've recently really been into his song, Billy Gray. Um, I also love Green Light on the Southern Railroad Line, Last Train from Four Valley, so I mean, uh, Church Street Blues is a, a classic for sure. Um, his albums with Tony Rice, Norman Blake and Tony Rice, those are some really excellent things. And yeah, everything he does, he just came out with a new album like within the last year, I think. <clears throat> he's a he's a he's a crude gem to have around. He's one of my favorites. Hey Betsy, good to have you here. Better late than never. And Billy the Kid, good to have you here. Jeb says, got my first mandolin two weeks ago. Epiphone MM30, started with studies from violin lessons. Great, welcome to the wonderful world of mandolins. Could you play a tune on a banjo? And would you ever try three finger banjo? Oh, yeah, I'll play a banjo tune. I've never done any three finger. Um, I just play claw hammer. Play this one. This is a cool banjo I got in the last like two years. It's uh, probably like 120, 130 years old, probably from the late 1800s. A buck bee. Um, yeah, I needed a little bit of. It's got nylon strings on it, but like a, a modern head cider no fortune i don't know what that tune was <laughs> well i can't remember what that tune is <clears throat> uh this banjo that's a good question i'm not entirely sure what the tuning is I think it's probably C. Yeah. So yeah, it's double C tuning. Uh, if it's if that tune was cider, no, it wasn't cider because cider is.
my volume. Yeah, I'm speaking a little quietly just because my throat is a little dry. <clears throat> is the, I'll just check, is the volume good for everybody else? I, I could do it, but it would take a little bit of finagling. I'm happy to try, um, but it would take a little bit of, but if it's, if it's quiet for everybody, I could, I'm happy to try. The one that always gets me is on the YouTube thing itself. Sometimes the volume gets turned down on the YouTube player when everything else looks like it's maxed out. <clears throat> okay, and yeah, it's just, and I'm mostly speaking a little quietly because my throat's all dry for some reason. It's been a little hot and dry here lately. Supergoat says, I recently started playing guitar and feel like it's been messing me up on some of my breaks for mandolin. Have you found this to be a problem? Definitely at, at first, um, as, as you start, as I go through phases, I'll speak for myself only, as I go through phases, like if I play a bunch of guitar, I get a little kind of lost on the mandolin or the banjo or etc. But generally I find that kind of I'll snap back into being able to play on mandolin um, after playing guitar for a long time. Uh, it just takes a little bit of kind of remembering, you know, half an hour and I'll be back in the mandolin zone. Um, but yeah, I think in general, you know, as I've played multiple instruments for quite some time now, I think more than anything, they've really, um, benefited the playing of other instruments. So I think, you know, playing, learning to play six string guitar in the long run has benefited my mandolin playing and just kind of my musicianship in general. <clears throat> All right, we got some more folks coming in. Lily, Lila, I'm not sure how to say that one. Apologies, but welcome. And Neil, good to have you here. Did I ever stay up all night on mid Midsummer Eve? I don't think I have on purpose, but, you know, not, not for some sort of, like, Midsummer event, but I may have on accident. I used to stay up a lot all night when I was younger, but I can't do it anymore. <laughs> Yes, with Main Fiddle Camp coming up, I will definitely be low on sleep, if not pulling all-nighters. So yeah, the banjo tuning is G, C, G, C, D. And so, when I was playing cider, it was coming out in C, but it's actually a D tune, so that's when banjo players would capo up, or tune up, depending on what kind of strings they've got. And Thugs Heron, Thug Sharon, I'm not sure how to say that either, but welcome. Great to have you here. Thanks for joining. Alan says, I was talking to a jazz drummer friend the other night. Wants to learn claw hammer. What's the best way to practice claw hammer technique? Um, what I would recommend is, what is it called? Clawhammerbanjo.net is a uh, Josh Turknet. Also goes by Brain Joe. Um, he's mostly how I learned a lot of great kind of introductory banjo stuff. Over there, he's got a bunch of YouTube videos as well. Um, super clear, concise introduction to playing claw hammer. Really helpful. Can't recommend recommend that guy enough. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, uh, Jeb says the banjo looks better maintained than guitars on the used market. That's the thing about banjos is like, I think it's been maybe the neck's been refinished. Um, but because they're mostly metal, I mean, like, if you look, I'll see if I can get this in the shot, like, the inside's pretty old looking, um, and you can see some, let's see, like, right in here, it's got some kind of cracks that have been sealed up, but, you know, with the metal, um, it's all metal, so they're, they're pretty sturdy little instruments, you know, and there's a lot of, yeah, a lot of banjos, I don't have my other banjo, out at the moment but you know all that like you find 100 year old banjos that are still shiny and look new um just because they're so much sturdier than thin wood guitars and mandolins and fiddles and stuff any good camps out there <laughs> yeah if people are going to music camps definitely throw it in the chat 
Camps I will be at include um, Main Fiddle Camp in August and, like I just mentioned, the O'Flaherty's Retreat in Texas in October. But everybody, th if, if anyone's going to any camps or festivals, throw them in the chat. I'd be curious to see what people are doing. <clears throat> Drop Tyne Antler says, love Bl Blake and Rice too. Me too. That's right, the new album is called Day by Day. Norman Blake. Drop Tyne also says, do, any, do you like any songs from the Bluegrass Album Band or Flatten Scruggs? I love both of them. Bluegrass Album Band... Those, like, six records are some of my favorite stuff. If people haven't heard Bluegrass Album Band, it's amazing. It's Tony Rice, Bobby Hicks, Doyle Lawson. Now I've got myself in a pickle. <laughs> um, Jerry Douglas. J.D. Crow. I can't remember who plays bass. Maybe somebody can fill me in. Um, but just incredible kind of modern era. Modern, like from the 70s. Maybe 80s? Um, maybe when, when did those albums come out? <clears throat> Again, maybe somebody can tell us. Um, but kind of real straight ahead bluegrass. Um, that isn't fr from the, actually from the 50s. Ah, yes. Do I know? Oh, wait, I gotta keep up with the chat here. Have you learned any Italian songs? I have not. No, I, I wish I played some of that beautiful Italian mandolin repertoire, but I have not. I got a request for the Rolling Waves. There's a couple of Rolling Waves. Humors of Trim. I can never remember which is which. But I'll play... I think I can get through two tunes I know as the rolling wave. You can tell me which one's which. My brain is correct which is rare uh, that first one is rolling waves or the lonesome jig 
And the second one is the rolling waves or the humors of trim. But <laughs> maybe somebody can verify. Fenario, good to have you here, says, uh, really saved you from the worst period of the pandemic. I was on a, f in, on a foreign town in the middle of nowhere in Patagonia. That sounds beautiful, but also hard if it's pandemic times and doesn't make things easy. Um, but love to see you're doing fine. Yeah, doing great here. Glad to have you here. Thanks for stopping in. Hope you're doing well as well. Thank you, Jake McLean Music, for the super chat. Really appreciate it. Any super chats that come through. There's also links in the description to Patreon. We got a bunch of Patreon members here where you get access to lessons a day early and patron-only live streams like this where we get a little more time just because there's less people um, to dive a little further in depth into some of these questions. Uh, there's also a PayPal link. Also, I will point out that uh, starting this Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, for just a couple weeks, I've got some open slots to do some private lessons if anyone is interested. Uh, there's a link. There should be a link in the description. Um, <clears throat> Lessonface.com forward slash Mando Lessons. Um, there should be some slots left, but not a ton. I'm just teaching on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, but not this first Tuesday. Uh, so starting on Wednesday for a couple weeks, I've got some slots open if anyone wants to grab a, a private lesson. All the links in the description, not required, but greatly appreciated. Uh, helps me do these live streams and put out lessons every week. And Jake says, just saying hi from Southeast Pennsylvania. Happy picking everyone. Happy picking to you too. There's a guy on YouTube. It's the biggest on claw hammer tutorials and has great repertoire. I bet that's Josh Turknet. Um, but it could be somebody else. I know there's like rock rocket science banjo. There's also uh, Tom Collins is a great banjo instructor here on YouTube. Does banjo blitz and banjo quest. Lots of good information out there. Oh, nice. Jake's going to Maiden Creek. I've heard great things about that. Would love to go sometime. Lewis is going to Great Lakes. Glad to hear it. <clears throat> What's your approach for adding double stops and chords to a tune? That is a good question. It's also a huge question. So what I would recommend is I have a whole series on both adding double stops and chords to tunes. Um, so in the technique and fundamental section of my website, <clears throat> you can look up the double stop series, I think it's towards the bottom of the technique and fundamentals page. Also, the intermediate series on Mando Lessons is all about that as well. I think there's, you know, it's just, it would take me an hour to kind of go through all that. I think it's best to just watch those. So sorry I can't give you a quick answer, but I'll at least point you in that direction. Olden in the way. Love them. And you also got the, the Fenario reference, a little... Dire Wolf. Love to see it. When you play double stops, how do you incorporate fretting two different strings with your fingers instead of playing open strings? Is that harmony incorporated with double stops? Yes. That's the, the short answer is yes. Like ultimately, what's going on in my head is I know the melody, I know the chords that are being played behind the melody. And so when I'm playing a, a note, uh, sorry about it. that hit the wrong button. Um, so yeah, if I'm playing that in the B part of rolling waves, I know the melody, I know what the chords are. It's gonna go, it's D, A, D, A, D. So we got a whole lot of A there. And my melody is the C sharp. So I can't play this open D, because a D is not in an A chord. Although it kind of works, but kind of to be music theory correct, 
I'm taking that D up to E, which is also in an A chord. But it's also very related to harmony. I just did that harmony series. Um, and the reason I did that is it's really all connected. Harmony, melody, double stops, um, kind of any sort of chord melody arrangement. It's all using the same tools and kind of all the different ways you can think about it and apply it will really um, deepen your understanding and your muscle memory of what's going on in there. Nice. It was, this is the second Rolling Waves was the one you were thinking of. Yeah, I love that tune. Any uh, fun beginner to intermediate tune suggestions to learn? You could learn that. Uh, so that's from Moose Said Chicken. Love that screen name. Uh, can't decide on a new one to learn. Oh, it's hard. Um, how about... I'll give you a couple. Coleman's March. <laughs> Irish jig, maybe out on the ocean. And maybe for something different, an old time tune, hollow poplar. A couple ideas, maybe you haven't learned one of those. Renair <laughs> says I could eat triplets for breakfast. I like that attitude. Hey Adele, good to have you here. Nice, glad to hear you've been digging in on the harmonies. I was just talking about those. Nice, yeah, yeah. Molly Tuttle uh kind of popularized the claw hammer guitar style, which is super cool and totally comes from claw hammer banjo. I'm sure she plays banjo as well. Ooh, could I play Gary Owen or Scotland the Brave? I don't know if either one of those is gonna pop out of my head. Oh, I can get a little Gary Owen, I think. Uh, super know that tune very well but there's a little idea of it anyway all right let's start transitioning i'll do a little lightning round on the last chat here but then let's play a little bit of that fisher's hornpipe not as fast or as sloppy as i played it at the beginning there um we'll go nice and slow and have some fun with it so get your mandolin tuned up if you haven't already while i get through these last couple couple questions Urson, uh sorry uh where did that go Mando Pirate says, fix the mandolin. Yeah, nice. Got a little leather strip within the bridge. Nice. Got something to prop it, prop it up there. Glad it's working. For the courses one, four, and five. Yes. I don't remember what tune we were talking about, but um, that's 
pretty much the chords for every tune I know. <laughs> and I don't think I've played anything weird enough to not have one, four, or five at this point. Earl's Chair is a great one for triplets, that's true. Oh, are the chords one, four, and five that you're keeping in your mind? Yeah, uh, in general, it's just the chords, t like 99% of the time, the chords are one, four, and five. And that's definitely the place to start. But then at this point, I'll know because I got those one, four, and five real down pat over the years, um, I can also kind of keep the whatever chord the tune calls for or kind of do little substitutions in my head too. But that's kind of the next step after you get comfortable with one, four, and five. All right, so yeah, let's play a little bit of that. Uh, Fisher's Hornpipe. I'll play the melody, you play the chords. It's kind of got a lot of chords, but it's in D. Just do your best. If you don't know the tune or the chord structure, just see if you can pick up a little bit of it on the fly. You'll end up at the end of the tune, even if you just find a note or two, that's more than you knew at the beginning. <coughs> ah, David says, do you ever use the r rubber grommets on your strings behind the bridge? I do indeed. I also have them, le much less importantly, I don't know if I can have them up here as well. I love to... To mute everything that's not between the bridge and the nut. It's kind of overkill, but it's just my preference. All right, let's see. A little Fisher's hornpipe. One. Thank you. 
Fisher's Hornpipe. That's a noty tune with a lot of chords. So wherever you're at with uh, that tune, you're doing great because that's not an easy one. So what should we play next week? That's the last question of the hour. Hope you all had a good hour. Hope you all have a great rest of the weekend. Throw in some suggestions for tunes next week and I'll check on them. Make sure it's uh, something we haven't done too recently. Is there a dad gad tuning for mandolin? Like open D but with no thirds. Um, the, the closest equivalent is G, D, A, D. Um, so you take your high E strings down to D. Um, <clears throat> and that's got a cool, you can kind of use that high D as a drone in the key of D and G, and then use a capo for other keys. And then, you know, I, uh, I've got, I think I've got a lesson on my website on different cross tunings or alternate tunings. Ooh, wood choppers next week. That's another noty tune. Maybe if we can find a tune that's not so noty, I'll look in, into that one. But it's a couple of real noty tunes in a row. Um, dry. Yep, Andy Irvine. A lot of bazooki players and play in GDAD. Could do cider. Do I not have a lesson for? Oh, there it is. We did wood choppers, episode ninety-eight. Midnight on the water is not on my website because it's a copyrighted tune. Angela and the Baker. I think we did that one. Right. Oh yeah, let's do Angela and the Baker. I did it, the last, my notes from Denise are saying, I've done one on the website, and I've also did one for the 30,000 subscriber jam, which would have been quite a while ago now. Um, I don't know exactly when that was, but we're more than double that now, so let's do, let's do Angela and the Baker. I do want to do Cider as well, so let's maybe do Cider two weeks from now. Awesome. Well, yeah, well, Angeline the Baker next time. So anyone who's maybe played Angeline the Baker too many times and is sort of like, oh, that's not my favorite tune anymore, try it down in the octave. I really love it down the octave. <laughs> So ultimately the idea with these play along or play along jams is, you know, wherever you're at, there's something you can add. You know, if you don't know the tune at all, maybe you get a note or two or a quarter or two and backing it up. If you know the tune, but you just need more time kind of cycling through it, that's a great time. Or if you know the tune cold and you're kind of can't, then it's a good time to add double stops or improvisation or try things down an octave. You know, just try to challenge yourself wherever you're at. That's all for today. Thank you all so much. Hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Bye-bye.